Welcome back, everyone. I'm CW, and this is the GOAT cast. Today, I'll be diving into the 90 Chicago Bulls. To be specific, from 91 through 98, the Chicago Bulls were one of the most unstoppable teams in NBA history. Repeat not once, but twice. Some even think it had Jordan not retired in 94 and had a full season in 95, they may have done the unthinkable and won eight rings in a row. During that time, it just seemed like the Bulls were a freight train and everyone else was a bug on the tracks. However, when really analyzing those years, there are a few teams that could have prevented those Chicago Bulls teams from getting those two three-peats. I thought I would name two from the Eastern Conference and two from the Western Conference. So let's start in the East. The first team of the one of all four that I believe had the best chance of stopping three-peats spanning from the 91-93 team into the 96-98 through team is the New York Knicks. Just looking at the names on that squad in 92, it just seemed that the Knicks organization and coach Pat Riley knew how to construct a rough and tough team that mirrored those Detroit Pistons of the late 80s that gave the Bulls so many problems. You had a de facto leader in Patrick Ewan with a beast of an ensemble with Xavier McDaniel, Mark Jackson, Charles Oakley, Gerald Wilkins, brother of Dominique and also my cousin on my mom's side. Couple that with young talent like John Starks, Anthony Mason, and a rookie Greg Anthony. The Bulls roster at that time was stacked with Jordan Pippen, B.J. Armstrong, Bill Cartwright, Horace Grant, John Paxson, Stacey King. Just looking at those names, it seemed like a pretty even matchup, except having one goat on the side of the Bulls, of course. Those Knicks teams, even into the second three-peat, had much of the same core, adding Tar Heel greats Hubert Davis and J.R. Reed to the fold. The only real knock to this team and reason why they never got over the dynasty Bulls hump is scoring. They got quite a bit from Ewan. They really needed a solid and consistent second contributor, and while John Starks was solid, he wasn't going to give you enough to outduel Jordan, Pippen, and those championship Bulls teams. However, in 92... They pushed the Bulls to a Game 7 in the conference semis, and one off game by the Bulls could have derailed their first three-peat and probably changed history forever. So the other Eastern Conference team, and this shouldn't be a surprise, but those Orlando Magic team from the second three-peat Bulls. Those were the Shaq and Penny Hardaway Magic that took an expansion team in Orlando to being a household name. They were the new, young, and up-and-coming duo that seemed primed for making a huge splash in the Eastern Conference and in the NBA period. Shaquille O'Neal came in as an absolute monster. You guys saw him. 7'1 and 285, but could move almost like a guard to the point. Shaq didn't only eat up the box score. He made arenas have a backup basket because he tore so many down. Couple that with Anthony Penny Hardaway, a 6'7 two-way player that could literally play point guard, small forward efficiently. A superstar ready to rise, this duo seemed primed to be a huge robot for those 96 Bulls repurposed with the unpredictable Dennis Rodman. They also had a solid three-point threat in Dennis Scott and a solid two-guard Nick Anderson. That Orlando Magic team even beat, yes, beat the 95 Bulls with the returning Michael Jordan in six. Even getting to the NBA Finals that year, falling to the Houston Rockets. To me, that should have been the shot of confidence that made them the team to beat in the Eastern Conference. They had almost every day to get the job done against a very good Chicago Bulls lineup. This one having added Rodman, like I said, and having Kukoc coming off the bench. But the GOAT going to do GOAT things, and a full-season Jordan helped sweep that 96 Magic. I mean, in reality, they had a solid enough squad to have possibly overcame that Bulls team. Three-point shooting, check. An all-star center, check. A two-way player that could score at a high clip and defend the best player, check. Think of them as the Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, Thunder of the 2010s. Young and with a lot of upside. Just not ready to go to the next level. Shaq will leave Orlando for the Lakers after that season, which pretty much killed off that Magic team. Out West, I could see two teams maybe taking those reins from those Bulls teams. First one, the team they played twice in the finals, the Utah Jazz. In 97 and 98, the Bulls overcame Carl Malone, John Stockton, and the Utah Jazz in six games. Those Jazz teams having those two Hall of Famers, Jeff Hornacek, Greg Ostertag, <laughs> yeah, I know, and Byron Russell. Doesn't sound like maybe those Knicks teams or even the one-two punch in Orlando, but if you watch back then, that Utah team under Jerry Sloan had an identity and had a game plan that wasn't always easy for teams to figure out. They had been able to take down those Hakeem-led Rockets and also a solid Laker team with Shaq. Just think, had Jordan missed Game 5 of the 97 Finals, the famous flu game, there's a very likely chance the Jazz would have taken a 3-2 lead, and who knows how that would have ended. It just seemed the Jazz was one offensive piece away from rising to NBA champions, but the Bulls, with their stars and bench, were just too much for them to overcome in the end. However, their series did produce three iconic moments. First, the flu game in 97, like I said. Second, the shot by Jordan over Russell. I say it wasn't a push-off. And the honor of being the highest-rated NBA Finals of all 
time. Finally, in the Western Conference, the playoff series I believe everyone wanted to see during those days, but we just missed out on. No team benefited from Jordan retiring not having a full season the next year more than the Houston Rockets. I believe this would have been a series. While the Bulls just had so much on their roster, the Rockets had mostly a championship caliber team ready to go. Akeem was still Akeem, a Hall of Fame center who got it done on both sides of the court. They had quite the team with a solid Kenny Smith. Don't let the inside the NBA crew fool you. A still capable Clyde Drexler, a young Robert Horry, Big Shot Bob, Junkyard Dog, Mario Ellie, young Sam Cassell, and Chucky Brown. Another scrappy forward. Looking at all those elements, the Chicago Bulls, Houston Rockets, NBA Finals in 96 and or 97 would have been must watch. Jordan have to deal with a few scrappy guards, forwards, Hakeem and Rodman likely going head to head, Rui Tomjanovic and Phil Jackson head to head. Had all the makers of big time basketball. And while out of 10 matchups, I'd like to take the Bulls 9 out of 10. It still had a shot of being a really back and forth nip tuck series that came down to the superstars and who had the will and heart to win. So, quickly, some honorable mentions the Lonzo Morning Miami Heat and those Reggie Miller Indiana Pacers out east. Doing that second three peat and out west, I'd say the young Shaq Lakers in Seattle would have had. Play otherworldly, but has some solid pieces to give those Chicago Bulls everything they could take. Either way, Jordan and those Bulls had a historic run and are one of the greatest teams in history. And no matter how many hypothetical situations I throw their way, won't change facts. So how about you guys? Do you agree, disagree, or the teams you think could have done it that I didn't mention? Let me know in the comments section. Please like and subscribe as that only helps me to come up with more content. And the GOATcast will be back soon with more content. Thank you guys.